Good morning. My name is Ben Lewis, and I'm a partner here at Consolarium Group. I'm the strategic healthcare practice leader. And one thing that we've been watching pretty carefully over the past year is this um, is a preliminary settlement that we became aware of um, really last fall, um, the fall of 2020. And, um, and the settlement involves the Blue Cross Blue Shield um, health plans and um, a lawsuit that had been brought against them that was um, indicating that there's not enough competition in layman's terms between um, health plans and that, um, in that employers have been adversely impacted by this. And so I'm putting it in the simplest terms possible, but uh, what we wanted to share with you is that there is now a way to participate in this settlement uh, financially speaking. And so the settlement is in total is around 2.6 or $2.7 billion. And um, this is spread across all Blue Cross Blue Shield um, insurance participants. And so we don't think it's going to really be a, um, a lot amount or a large amount for a given employer. But um, we wanted to let you know how to make that claim. The other part of the settlement before um, getting into the application process is that it also dealt with how blue um, blue health plans compete with each other. So just taking a step back, most people are probably, when you think of Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, I know I've had conversations where people just say, oh, um, they work for Blue Cross Blue Shield. And that's really not an accurate statement because nobody, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield is just an association. Um, and then there's independent organizations that, um, that participate within that association or the benefits of the association. And so you might have a, um, your Blue Cross Blue Shield plan is going to be um, limited to a specific geographic area and um, generally. And then there's, um, whereas there's others that are in other areas, such as Alabama Blue Cross Blue Shield or Tennessee Blue Cross Blue Shield. These aren't all the same company. They have... Um, independent boards that work um, and manage those organizations. Some of them are, are publicly traded, others are nonprofit. And so it really runs the gamut. And, um, and so when you think of Blue Cross Blue Shield, don't think of um, one company, think of a lot of individual companies that would love to have each other's business. And so um, right now, if you're a, a Blue Cross Blue Shield health plan, you can't compete with another Blue Cross Blue Shield health plan, meaning the territories, geographic territories are very carefully outlined of this is where your, um, your territory ends. And so if an employer is headquartered within, within that territory, you can go ahead and, and quote their business. But if they're outside that territory, even just a couple miles outside it, then that's another blue health plans territory and you're not allowed to quote on that. And so that has changed a little bit um, within this um, settlement that was agreed to. But um, from the appearances of it, it's really only benefiting really large employers, large being I think it's 5,000 members or more and those that are self-funded. And so if that happens to be you, then, um, then you can go on to this bcbssettlement.com website that's been set up and you can search for your group name and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Uh, you can search for your group name and it will tell you if you're part of the first list, if you will, of companies that are eligible um, to get a second blue bid. It doesn't open up the doors for you to quote every BCBS plan that's out there, but um, it opens the opportunity to have a second blues health plan bid on your business in one outside your geographic area. And so that's definitely something worth exploring uh, if you are in, in that case, just because um, having more options is always good. And, and it's good to um, check what all those options are from a pricing and network perspective. And so what I wanted to walk through quickly was the bcbssettlement.com website. It's really not a, um, a difficult application process to, um, again, to apply to be part of that settlement, the financial aspect of it. But first, I just want to show you what I mentioned earlier about looking up your group name. And so you can go to bcbssettlement.com, click that check your eligibility link. And, and here it's showing you the, um, the type where you can type in your, your employer's name or the company name and find out whether or not they would be eligible for a second blue bid. You'll see there's also some other frequently asked questions that are listed here as well. 
So back to the home page, I just want to walk through quickly how to file a claim. And um, this website has other information that gives more of the background and legal jargon that's, um, that's kind of led up to this point. But for actually um, applying to become a member of the settlement, you, um, you may have received a postcard in the mail, and that's really what this first page is, is prompting you. Um, if you've received a postcard saying you're, you had Blue Cross Blue Shield coverage during um, this period, um, they would have given you a unique ID on that postcard that you could enter right here. If you don't have a postcard though, no worries, you can go down to this um, other option here and select that to file a claim. This is also open to individuals that have Blue Cross Blue Shield coverage, but I'm covering um, the business application here. And so you select business, you'd enter in your company information. I'll put ours in just to be able to move through the screens. email and moving on and this is where um, you just need to know a little bit more background information and so here you would select the health plan name such as um, so this is where you see there's all of these Blue Cross Blue Shield health plans that are um, that are out there and so it is smart where if you start typing in the name of yours um, it'll bring up that carrier's name for instance and so it prompts you to things with an asterisk are mandatory entries. There's also the opportunity to um, enter things that aren't um, required, but it would help them as they try to understand or figure out uh, how much you would be allocated as part of the settlement. And so you could put in your group number if you knew what that was. And again, you're going to fill this out for each year of coverage um, that you had with the Blues. And so, and for fully insured groups, this goes all the way back to 2008, I believe. And um, for uh, self-insured employers, it goes back to 2015, uh, September of 2015. And then the end date for both of those, fully insured or self-funded, is October of 2020. That's the, the cutoff. Um, again, that's when this preliminary settlement um, came about. And so that's the cutoff of where the coverage would end. And so you would have to enter this information for each year of coverage. <clears throat> Usually your plan year is on a calendar year basis. And so it would be coverage effective January 1st of um, 2008, let's say, through December of 20, 2008. And then you would repeat that for each year that you had or offered an ex, um, a Blue Cross Blue Shield coverage. So I'll just put one in here, 01, 2008, 12, 2008. Oops, it starts February, my mistake. So the earliest entry would be February. If you had coverage in 2008, you would um, start in February and then um, go through December. And then you would enter that for each of the following years that you had them. <clears throat> and so those would be a January effective um, through December end for each one. So you do that for each year of coverage and then you select, I've added all my health plans. Oh yeah, so here's another asterisk. So it's a mandatory an, um, answer. Was this purchased through a purchasing equity? And that would be like a PEO and most um, you would know if that's that was you, and so for most, you would say that's no. And then this is another interesting part. They have to, it, the settlement is based on your um, contribution to premium, um, so meaning how much the employer is covering of the insurance premium versus the employee. And then from there, there's additional layers. It's um, how much does a single contribute versus a family contract contribute. And so you can accept a default option, which basically makes an assumption of what you contributed. And <clears throat> my understanding is that's 85% for towards single coverage. So if the employer is covering 85% uh, of that premium rate, um, 
that would be the assumption here, or 66% for, um, for family coverage. And that's for the fully insured premium. The self-funded premium is 82% towards the single coverage and 75% um, towards family. And so if you contributed less than that, I would just accept the default. And if you um, knew that you were richer than that, maybe significantly richer, you can, you can select this other option. Um, and I'll just look at that quickly so you can see what's involved. But you would have to, again, for each plan year, you would have to enter in what your composite contribution percent was. And so all of your single and family rolled up to what is the composite, 90%, um, 80%, 60% um, by plan year. And so you would do that again for each year, and then you'd have to upload supporting documentation. And that documentation needs to be in a PDF or like an image file format. And so you couldn't just upload an Excel spreadsheet that, um, that shows what it was each year. And so you would need something, maybe an employee handbook or something that outlines what, a, what the employee was contributing versus what the employer to show the, how you arrived at your aggregate contribution. And so you would add that file. So this is definitely more cumbersome, but if you want to maximize the reward because you think you contribute more than their defaults, um, this would be what's involved. And so I'm going to go back to the default way though. And, um, and so the next thing that they prompt you to, to fill in is how you want to be reimbursed. And they actually have Venmo as an option. I'm, I'm impressed. PayPal, um, a prepaid card or check. I'm guessing most employers would want to check. And so they would select that, go next. And then it gives you a summary of everything you've entered. You just review that, make sure it's all entered um, correctly and um, your payment. And then you're just signing off on that everything you're attesting to everything being true uh, to the best of your knowledge that you entered. Um, it's an electronic signature and you're able to submit it. And then from there, I would imagine they'd be following up with you to let you know um, a timeline and um, as that becomes known. And again, we don't think there's gonna be a lot of dollars that are actually gonna be eligible or passed on to any given employer, even large employers. I can't imagine this is gonna be that large of a sum of money, but, um, but that's we just wanted to review the, the process for filling out the application. and and catch you up a little bit on what's been happening regarding that because this this ability to um, to make this formal application uh, to be a member of the settlement is new and if you have any questions if you're a client of ours feel free to reach out to your account manager or feel free to reach out to me um, here at consularium group we'd be happy to walk through um, any of these steps or any questions you have thanks so much have a great day